Welcome, I'm Amanda Quachi, research writer here at Stansbury Research. Today, I'm sitting down with my boss, Dr. David Eifrig, to cover one of the toughest topics, cancer. Everyone, me, you, everyone watching, we've all been touched by cancer. Whether it's you or someone you love, you've seen it, you've felt it, you've seen how devastating it can be. That's why we're here today. We want to talk to you about the latest in cancer research. For those of you who don't know Dave, or Doc as most folks around here call him, he quit a successful career on Wall Street to go to medical school at the age of 38 at UNC Chapel Hill. He then went on to become a research fellow at Duke in molecular biology with published research in ophthalmology. So he's an ophthalmologist and an eye surgeon. Now he heads up four newsletters here, including his original and perhaps favorite, Retirement Millionaire, where he shares insight into both the financial markets and health and wellness topics. Dave, I know that we followed cancer research for years and we're really excited at some of the most recent developments. So why are we so focused on cancer right now? Thanks, Amanda. And as you mentioned, cancer truly affects everyone. This year, we're predicting 1.6 million new cases, and we know that about 41% of men and 38% of women will get some type of cancer in their lifetime. It's also worth noting that it's the second leading cause of death in the United States, just after heart disease. It's one in four deaths. That's about 600,000 people this year. But that doesn't even count the toll cancer takes after you survive your first diagnosis. We're now seeing that surviving cancer puts you at a higher risk of future cancers, and you're likely to face post-traumatic stress disorder as well. So we know cancer is a killer, we know it's hard to treat, and I guarantee that everyone watching us either has had cancer or knows someone with cancer. Right, that's why this is such an important topic. And for those watching, whether you know a lot about cancer or not, we're going to cover some really useful stuff. To start, we're going to explain what exactly cancer is. Cancer forms when your cells start dividing too fast. You see, in a healthy body, cells divide to make new cells when you need them. But sometimes the DNA that oversees all of this gets damaged or mutates, so it can't put the brakes on growing and dividing. That's how we get tumors and other cancers. And as these cancers grow and spread, they start hurting healthy tissue. They can also hog all the blood supply and cause a whole host of problems. Dave, can you explain some of the main contributors to cancer risk? Sure. Here's the thing. Cancer is one of those diseases with a lot of contributing factors. I mean, we know that certain genetics and certain diets contribute to it. Something called DNA is the first focus here. It's like the blueprint for your body. Every time it's copied, there's a chance for error. And that's why age is one of the biggest risk factors. And the more times our cells copy and divide, the higher the chance of introducing errors in the DNA. That's why you're more likely to get cancer the older you get, because there are more opportunities to introduce mistakes in DNA. In fact, about 87% of all cancers form in folks over the age of 50. That blueprint can also change from environmental factors. Exposures to toxins, radiation, or inflammation all damage your DNA. And it's this damaged DNA that can lead to cancer. That's why we recommend ways to combat these things in Retirement Millionaire. For example, so much research shows how being inactive and sitting too much can cause what? About 10 different types of cancers? It's crazy. That's why exercise is the best thing you can do to help cut your risk. I like to say, if you're moving, you're alive. It's the simplest advice I can give. And great advice, not only for preventing cancer, but good advice to help people who already have cancer. If you're already diagnosed with cancer, you're likely familiar with the traditional treatments. It's typically a three-prong approach. There's surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. I remember it wasn't all that long ago the big breakthrough was to combine these treatments and really hit cancer with them all to knock it out. And we were seeing a lot of success with that. Right. And we know from a lot of research that these usually work best together. We figured out how to pair surgery and radiation. 
We've seen advances in surgery, like minimally invasive procedures. We've seen lots of chemo advances, and we even just learned about a new precision-based radiation diagnostic treatment device. It does both, but there's still problems. Chemo especially takes a massive toll on the body. Lots of patients experience nausea, hair loss, and it essentially wipes out your immune system, putting you at risk for other illnesses. And radiation can cause other damage to your tissues. That's why we were excited a few years ago to learn about another type of therapy. It's immunotherapy, and we even wrote a book about it. Immunotherapy means you're essentially teaching your immune cells to fight off cancer. Your immune system is really fantastic. It fights off bacteria and viruses all the time. So getting this chance to program it in a way to fight cancer is really using your body to cure you. The history of medicine here is great stuff. It started in the late 1800s with Dr. William Coley. And he found a man who had a tumor in his neck named Fred Stein. And Fred went through four surgeries and they couldn't get it all. And then he developed an infection on his face. And you know what happened? His immune system not only fought off the infection, but took care of the tumor as well. This was the start of research into immunotherapy. Decades later, Dr. James Allison in California started looking at antibodies. And his work with T cells began in the 1980s. And in 1996, he was the first to show that blocking the pathway that shut down T cells could help them fight cancer. In fact, he actually helped get the first antibody drug approved for cancer in 2011. It's ipilimumab, and we'll get to that in a moment. Now, just to take a step back, antibodies are really key here. Antibodies are like spiders or Pac-Man, if you remember that game. They help our bodies hunt down invaders they've seen before. Think about it this way. When we have an invader, like a virus, our body will fight it off with our immune cells. One type of cell, the B cells, take the virus and make special proteins that attach only to that virus. These are antibodies. They begin to help fight the current infection, but more importantly, if you come across that virus again, your antibodies will recognize it, latch on, and help you fight it off sooner before it can really do any damage. It's like if you see an enemy you recognize and already know how to defeat it. Exactly. And scientists now are making these antibodies that specifically attach to just cancers, not viruses or colds. Unfortunately, one big struggle you might guess is that cancers are all so different. So trying to find what we can target with these antibodies is tricky. But we're starting to see some great results. The antibody Allison developed is called ipilimumab, and it really turned the tide on survival rates for melanoma patients. And just a side note, any drug with that ending, the MAB, is an antibody. And since they're made up and all alike, we call them monoclones, or single clone of an antibody, or monoclonal antibody, MAB. That's the MAB on the end of these drug names. There's also a drug that hits a certain type of breast cancer. It's trastuzumab, and it's really making a difference for folks with breast cancer. And that's the number one cancer in women. What's more, these antibody treatments specialize their attacks on cancer cells and have fewer side effects. Dave, I just want to ask, it doesn't seem intuitive. I mean, you get cancer because your body is sort of run amok. Shouldn't your body be able to fight it off? Don't we have things in place so we don't attack our own cells? That's a great point. And you see, immune diseases sometimes hurt us by attacking healthy cells. That's why you get things like rheumatoid arthritis and other so-called autoimmune diseases. But our immune system can knock out cancer. That's why this kind of treatment is so important. We're reprogramming our own immune cells to fight off these rogue cells. However, we only want to target only the cancer cells. And what makes them different from healthy cells, that's the key here. We need to know how they're different so we can hunt them down. And one way that cancer cells hide from our body is by using a receptor for something called PD-1. And PD-1 is a tag that's found on fetal cells that lets mom's immune system know it's a baby and not a foreign tissue it needs to destroy. 
cancer cells mutate and can express that receptor. And that means they're cloaked from our immune system. Our body thinks they're a part of us and not something strange and foreign. Basically, the body doesn't think there's anything wrong with them, so they live and keep dividing and spreading. They also lose their normal self-killing machinery, making them immortal. And some of these immunotherapy drugs work by knocking out that PD-1 receptor on all of your cells. With that hiding trick gone, that cloaking trick, your immune cells can get in there and kill the cancer. Great, and I just want to say that another thing these drugs can do is target the actual mutations. Remember, we mentioned that the mutations mess up the blueprints. It's like that. Your body might make the wrong protein or skip a step in the process or have that step be broken. These problems arise in specific cancers. Now, one of these mistakes in the blueprint causes a problem with something called mismatch repair. Basically, every time your DNA duplicates, there are proteins that go and fix any errors in the DNA bases. Think of it like a proofreader for your DNA. Without a functioning proofreader, things can get messy. So researchers from Hopkins a few years ago looked at folks with this type of mutation in patients with colorectal cancer. It's around 4% of all cancer patients. They saw that the antibody drug Keytruda homed in on this problem and helped these folks knock out their cancer. Those with colorectal cancer who didn't have this type of mutation, however, didn't see the benefit. It's exciting because it's the first time we've seen a response to immunotherapy in patients with colon cancer. 62% of the folks with mutations responded to treatment. And it turned out the five-year survival rates went up so much, they stopped the study at five years and people were still going strong. That's unheard of for this kind of hard-to-treat deadly tumors. And that's why we're so interested in this stuff. We're talking about real progress and even cures for cancers that used to be among the deadliest. And remember, we've got more on this in our book. We talk about what to do if you're diagnosed with cancer, what you need to ask your cancer doctor, where to find the best cancer centers, and how to get into a clinical trial. And I can't stress enough how important it is for anyone diagnosed with cancer or who has a loved one with cancer that they read this book. And folks, we also cover this kind of thing in our monthly newsletter, Retirement Millionaire. Each month we cover not only great market research and recommendations, but also ways to help improve your health and wellness. In fact, we've talked about some additional health tips for cancer, like fasting during chemotherapy, and how much exercise can reduce cancer risk. And one thing we really mention a lot is taking care of your immune system. Inflammation damages your healthy cells and keeps your immune system imperfect. So doing things to cut down inflammation and promote healthy immune cells goes a long way to keeping you healthy. For instance, one of the things we've said for years is to eat probiotic foods to keep your gut bugs working right. That's because most of our immune system is modulated by the bacteria living in our intestines. And Dave, you had a really good story about this. Yeah, so for years I've told some friends of mine, a couple other doctors, that they needed to study yogurt with chemotherapy patients to see if the gut bugs might help with the treatment. And they always, they laughed at me and, and told me I was crazy. But I'm not actually crazy. I would literally tell them they could win a Nobel Prize for this. Well, a new study published in Science has recently proved me right. They took folks who had antibiotics before immunotherapy and those who didn't take them. Now, remember, antibiotics kill bacteria, including the bugs that are in your gut. So they found if you didn't have the higher number of gut bugs, you had a far lower and poorer response rate to the medications. Those who had high levels of gut bugs responded great. I mean, adding probiotics after taking an antibiotic should be a no-brainer. And adding probiotics to treatments involving our immune system, also a no-brainer. And we're seeing how this all ties together, and it's so important to not only understand, but to arm yourself with what you need to do to get better. And our job in my group, our group at Retirement Millionaire, is to empower you to take control of your life, 
control of your health, your wealth. Normally we talk a lot about how to do that financially with investing and saving money, but it's also about taking control of your health. No one is going to take care of you. The government won't, Big Pharma won't, even your own doctor. You need to be your own advocate. Right now, we're offering Retirement Millionaire to you for just $99. Consider it your roadmap to a healthier, wealthier future. And if you take us up on this offer, we're going to give you a free copy of the Living Cure book. Just click on the link below to get started. Thank you for watching and thank you Amanda for spearheading this effort to get a little more out about cancer and I uh, appreciate you joining me today. Here's to our health, wealth and a great retirement.